It's full-fledged spring here on the farm. If you couldn't tell by all the birds singing around me and the sound of sprinklers in the pasture. It's early morning and Stu and I thought we would sneak out to gather up some flowers and herbs for our winter tea storage. Now, of course, being where we are in Washington, we don't actually grow tea, but all of these herbs and flowers lend themselves to a very gentle and delicious spring garden tea. Let's go gather. first stop on our journey is down here in the shade garden at this gorgeous bee balm. Now just a year ago, two years ago, this was one little plant and it has self-seeded everywhere which is fine by me because it grows these beautiful flowers that the bees are crazy about. But these little purple petals on it, they almost have this tropical fragrance and when they're dried, they add a really lovely flavor to our spring tea. Whether you decide to take these beautiful purple petals off before or after you dry them is totally up to you. You can dry the head in its entirety and just pull the petals off after for your tea. You have to be really careful about when you collect bee balm around here because I have our bee boxes right behind me. It's one of the good things about collecting in the morning is that the bees aren't quite awake yet. Otherwise, they're gonna wanna share in your harvest. staple in spring garden tea is mint, of course. Now, the last couple of years, a quail has hatched her eggs in this exact mint bush, and I'm hoping that I don't disturb. It's hard to see down through the thicket of it, but I'm hoping that she doesn't jump out and start them if she's here again. I'm not sure. Mint is one of those things that people always tell you not to plant right directly in your garden because it takes over. Well, I didn't listen but it is true. This mint closes off the pathway to my greenhouse many times a year. So coming in to harvest it for tea is not only delicious and helpful in the winter time, but it's actually practical. <laughs> Give it a little haircut. morning time, chamomile sucks its little petals down to its sides, so it always looks a little silly to me this time of day. But we grow a lot of chamomile for tea. Such a wonderful, welcomed fragrance in a wintertime cup of tea. Helps to relax, make you calm. Kind of like the process of picking up all these little teeny chamomile flowers. Now I know they make tools for this, or so I learned this year but I still think there's something to be said for the process of just sitting down and tucking into some chamomile picking. It's like a treasure hunt, isn't it? All right, here's where we're going for now. These are raspberry leaves. Really great in an herbal tea. But you wanna catch them in the morning and you wanna catch them in the springtime because by the summer, a lot of their nutrients have gone elsewhere. When I first learned how to find some of these things for tea in my garden, I thought surely raspberry leaf tea, like I've heard of that being a thing, but it has to be more complicated. Is there some sort of process you have to do to the leaves or some crazy particular variety? No, there's not. It's just raspberry leaves, very uncomplicated.
One of the hardest parts about collecting all the stuff from the garden for your tea is actually just slowing down because it's a lot of little picking here and there. You saw us pick the chamomile. It takes some time. It's a perfect time of day to do this. But even still, I have to remind myself, just slow down. Take your time. Don't try to rush it. This isn't a job just to get done to cross off your list. It's a time to enjoy it. Enjoy your garden or your neighbor's garden or your friend's garden, depending on where you're gathering from. Part of what you'll remember when you make the tea in the winter time is that wonderful feeling you had of, of warm mornings spent in your garden. This is a two-year rose that's outside our bedroom window. It's a David Austin called Gertrude Jekyll, and it's been the first one to really explode. Everybody else has just a flower or two, but look at her offering, it's beautiful. I don't want to totally rob her of all of her glory, but there are a few of these roses that are going to fall off in the next day or so, I can tell. So I'm going to steal some of their rose petals for our spring garden tea. This particular tea will have our mint, red raspberry leaves, chamomile, rose, and bee balm. But you should know that whatever you have in your garden, you can make your own spring garden tea. You can add in more mint if you'd like or take it out if you don't. Find a tea that you love. And one way to test that is while some of it is drying for winter storage, some of it is also steeping on the stove for breakfast. This is the time of year where my dehydrator never goes too far out of my kitchen for reasons exactly like this. Whether we're dehydrating fruit or drying herbs, it's just very handy to have on hand. Keep a batch going in here for the rest of the spring. Now, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you're not collecting your spring garden tea ingredients from your own garden, then make sure that wherever you get them hasn't been sprayed with anything, because the last thing you want to do is make an herbal tea of that. And then you see how some of these bee balms still have their heads on them? That's totally fine, because the way that we make our herbal teas in the winter is we actually put it into a French press so that we can just press it down and it strains out all of the bits of flour. So it doesn't really matter to me if it's imperfect because it doesn't need to fit in a tea bag. This is actually the perfect job for children if you can get them up early enough.
Even though we're gonna save the bulk of our herbal tea for winter time, when there's not things growing anymore, I'm gonna make a little fresh steeped batch for breakfast. To do this, I'm just gonna add in a bunch of the ingredients that we harvested this morning. Add in some water to the top of the saucepan. Bring it to a low boil. And then let it simmer for about 20 minutes. After that, I'll strain it. Add in a little bit of honey from the bees and have a beautiful cup.